Hey guys, Lizzie here. So, have you ever wondered about the importance of a bite? Some animals use it to chew, others to slice, and some animals don't really use it at all. But why do animals have such powerful jaws? And what animal has the strongest bite of them all? Well, I've come to the big cat sanctuary to find out. What have you got up to today? You're just wheeling a barrel of horse into a lion enclosure. So this is Athena, she is a jaguar and is an absolute stunner. She is one of the cats which has the strongest biting force relative to weight. So powerful. Athena has a bite force of 2,000 psi, that's pounds per square inch. But why on earth does a jaguar need such a strong bite? So to help me answer some of those questions, we are joined by a friend of the channel and biologist, who else other than Dr. Ben Garrett? Now let's go straight into it because in front of us are two amazing skulls. What are they? Well, we have a lion skull here. Okay. And very similar tiger skull here. Tiger skull. So I recently fed tigers and lions and a jaguar by hand. And one of the things I witnessed was this incredible bite force. Why do these big cats have such a strong bite? It reflects the way it's hunting. Lions are all about, look, a bunch of lions. If there's a gang of you, you can get away with having a strong bite force. It's still much more than that was, but you don't yep. need a stronger bite force, but that's not the way you hunt. Now with tigers, it's a very different situation to the lions. They're not in big groups. They will kill yep. one another. They're very territorial. Um, so again, you've got to try and be as quiet as possible. You don't want your prey injuring you, hurting you. If something injures a tiger, they've got no help. So how does the jaguar kill its prey? If you notice with the jaguar, it have got very long teeth that actually go to the back of the skull and there's the ambush uh, hunters. The jaguar will go through the forest, it'll be as quiet and as cryptic, okay. and it'll go behind, back of the neck, and it pierces the skull with those very long, sharp teeth. You need this a huge amount of force to go straight through and have that quick killing bite. So these are rather impressive. What are they and how come it's a little bit muddy? They are two different species of shark jaws. This is a great white. Great white. And this one? This one's a pool beagle. It's a relative of the great white, but it's found in British waters. So That's... something with teeth and jaws like this is just off our coast. It looks a little bit discoloured. These are not bone, they're cartilage. Okay. And cartilage attracts uh, dirt a little bit more. And the good thing about that is it's a very flexible, very strong skeleton. So effectively, if you're brave enough, you can get a great white and bender in a circle. But don't try. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but what it allows is this really flexible jaw. They can actually, with an amazing series of ligaments, tendons and muscles, slingshot their jaws forward. So wow. that last moment is able to get things just out of reach, but also adds a lot more force. Although, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit surprised. It's quite weak, the bite, bite force of a, of a great white. What, 600, 650? I mean, yeah. it's not that, that much, to be honest. <sighs> you're right. <laughs> it's not massive. It, Sorry, sharks. Part of that is because of the way they feed again. They need the bite force to grab on. Either they'll take a chunk out, and we're having these serrated teeth, is enough, or they'll grab hold and thrash and just pull off a limb or pull off a huge chunk. So it's by having that flexible body and these really sharp shearing teeth allows them just to shear massive chunks out and the rest of their body, they're just pulling their way out. Uh, that's why they're pretty awesome predators. Got a lovely skull here. What have we got? What do you reckon? Oof, pretty big crocodile. Mm, Nile crocodile? You're right, it's one of the crocs. Now it's probably Nile, it could be an American croc or it could be a salty. They're, they're, they're difficult to tell apart, I'm not a croc expert, but they've got massive bite forces. What is their bite force? Something like a Nile croc that can be about this sort of size, maybe even bigger, is at least 7,000, up to 7,700 PSI. If it's trying to take out a zebra or a wildebeest or something like that, it'd be a pretty brave animal trying to take down the floor <laughs> wildebeest. So they have to do a very special technique. And what is that technique? The death roll. The death roll. The death roll. We all know the death roll. <laughs> <laughs> Once the animal's in its mouth and it's locked down, they've got a very good clamping mechanism. They just twist their bodies and they spin. So if I'm spin. a zebra, what I would are you? come along, grab you, got my food, you are not going anywhere. Yeah. And rather than chewing, they don't do this, I'd actually twist my whole body and twist and twist. If I keep twisting, eventually something will. Yeah. Arm <laughs> pops off. That's exactly what they do. They are incredible. So, what do we have next? Well, you've seen crocodiles and you've seen all these different things, even predatory cats. They've all got impressive bite forces, but there's one that 
well, blew them out of the water, literally. literally. And it's this thing here. Ben, what is it? Because it is monstrous. It is massive, isn't it? It's, it's absolutely huge. huge, terrifying. It looks like a giant croc, but it's not. It's from an extinct uh, marine predatory reptile called a pliosaur. Pliosaur. A pliosaur, a huge, huge 10 meter long beast that was swimming around the UK about 140 million years ago. And its bite force, massive. Go on. 33,000 PSI. More than four times the strength of a crocodile's bite. So how would it generate such power and force? If you try and catch my hand, imagine your, your arms are the two jaws here. Okay, You're yep. trying to snap onto my hand. I'm trying to get away. Yep. Got me. And I'm, yep. Easy, Hugely easy. powerful slap there. Yeah, sorry. But if you do, that's all right. If you do it again, put your hands yes. together, a huge amount of force going down. If you try and open those now, yeah. it's very hard because uh, all okay. that strength is back here, isn't it? Yeah. So if you imagine a mouse trap with all the mechanisms at the back, of course, yeah. It's spring loaded. It's the same sort of thing here. So they would have gone through the water, found their prey, and all that power would have come from this join and then to clamp down. Slapping down. That is incredible. Yeah. And the size of them is kind of just blows you away, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, this is 10 metres long. It, it's as long as a bus. So where was this found, Ben? Well, fossils have been found all around the world, from Patagonia to China to Africa. And this one has been found in Swindon. Here in the UK? Here in the UK, between what? Swindon and Bristol. The whole area around here was a series of lovely, warm, shallow seas, and these massive 10 meter predators were just swimming around, looking for prey, looking for something to eat. Wow. Amazing. Well, there you have it. Ben, thank you so much. If you want to see more from Ben, just click here to find out more about his unique hobby. If you want to see more from the channel, just click subscribe. And we'll see you soon here on Earth Unplugged.